On November 3rd, 2013, a Redditor named Tramstop Dan uploaded an Imgur album to What's In This Thing. The album contained the bizarre contents of an artist's folio case, hundreds of pages of detailed drawings of UFOs, terrifying demonic beings, complex maps, feverish journal entries, patents for bizarre, complex machines of unknown and seemingly otherworldly purposes, and references to a fantastical event that occurred on July 7th, 1977. In total, the work spanned a period of over 30 years. In today's episode of Reddit Unsolved, we're going to take a look at the strange case of the Box of Crazy and Reddit's years-long attempt to unravel its mysteries. Within hours, thousands of people were pouring through the contents of the album, trying to uncover the mysteries of just what the Box of Crazy was, what it was about, and who had created it. They quickly identified the author as Daniel Christensen, deceased previously of St. Petersburg, Pinellas County, Florida. Tramstop Dan thought that Christiansen was likely a World War II vet, suffering from trauma, who'd gone crazy after witnessing a tornado at Tampa Bay in 1977. There was superficial evidence to back this up. The papers and the maps from the 30s, the drawings marked Tampa Bay and the VA placemat all suggested he could have been a resident of nearby Bay Pines VA Center at the time. Further to this, the references to UFOs were all dated 1977 or later. There don't appear to be any references to extraterrestrials dated before the event, and what does predate the event has mostly religious connotations. Some suggested that the Book of Crazy could be explained as outsider art, a form of art that's characterized by untrained artists, often with mental health conditions, such as Henry Dodger, who was discussed at length by Down the Rabbit Hole, and Royal Robertson. Outsider art often features the themes of aliens or religion, and often outsider artists are complete unknowns until they pass away, leaving behind a large body of work. Many others suggested that the Book of Crazy was the simple result of hallucinogens, such as LSD or DMT. While the debates raged on, the Imgur album was cross-posted to WTF and Heavy Mind, then uploaded to 4chan's Xboard, then reposted again to WTF, hitting the front page once again and gaining even more karma. On November 4th, a Redditor named Funkifies created a subreddit called Alien Puma Space Train to organize research and study the Book of Crazy. With more eyes on the case, more details soon emerged. From the scraps of correspondence between Christensen and his family, a Redditor named Drive-By Historian figured out that DC was likely an immigrant born around 1904 who'd arrived in the US in the 1920s, served in World War II before receiving a discharge, and spent the rest of his life as a carpenter before passing away in 1994. They also found some Danish documentation that showed that DC was likely a Seventh-day Adventist. This, they reasoned, could explain some of the religious elements in the box of crazy. The creatures with the wings were likely the living beings, or cherubim, referenced in the books of Ezekiel and Revelations. Four-headed giants with the face of an ox, a man, a lion, and an eagle. These angelic beings are said to carry God's throne in the Abrahamic religions. A direct quote to Ezekiel is spotted, and this theory is mostly confirmed. Ezekiel describes these angels as moving via gyroscopic machines that resemble wheels within wheels. This then also accounts for many of the UFO-like images of floating spheres throughout the BOC. Attention then turned to the image of these four-faced beings appearing over a specific building with a date. July 7th, 1977, Tampa, Florida. There are many variations of this image throughout the BOC, often seen over a specific building on the Tampa Bay shore, often accompanied by text describing a tornado, or what looked like a tornado, but was actually a UFO hiding within the storm. It was quickly figured out that the building in the image was actually a real place in Florida's Tampa Bay that has since been demolished the inverted pyramid pier at St. Petersburg. However, there's no record of any tornado hitting Tampa Bay in 1977, although one did hit nearby Polk County, which admittedly is quite some distance away. But someone did point out that water spouts are occasionally seen in Tampa Bay, so this could account for weird weather phenomenon. Redditors began to dig into any events that may have occurred in the area on that day, and someone quickly pointed out that there was actually a pretty spectacular art installation installed on and around the inverted pyramid pier at that time. An artist by the name of Rockney Krebs had been exhibiting a public artwork called Laser and Starboard, Home on the Range, Part 4. It involved attaching lasers to the inverted pyramid pier, which were then shone at various mirrors on nearby buildings, creating a fantastic light show in the sky. This seemed like too much of a coincidence, and many were convinced that the event seen by DC was actually just Krebs' laser show. 
perhaps taking place at the same time as some unusual weather event, such as an unreported tornado or even a large water spout, leading DC to conclude that he was seeing something otherworldly, especially given his upbringing as a Seventh-day Adventist. Whatever the case may be, from this date onwards, DC's writings become increasingly interested in the subject of UFOs. Further evidence of this theory emerged when a Redditor managed to track down a magazine that DC had referenced several times. A 1979 copy of Omni Science and Science Fiction magazine that focused on UFOs. According to DC, a picture contained in the magazine matched what he'd seen. The pictures in the magazine themselves, which are replicated several times in DC's art, show lenticular clouds, which, due to their striking shape, often cause erroneous UFO reports. An interesting fact is that several pictures of lenticular clouds have been seen capping Washington's Mount Rainier, the location of the world's first flying saucer sighting by Kenneth Arnold in 1947. However, DC seems to have come to believe that the lenticular clouds aren't just mistaken for UFOs, but that UFOs generate a cloud to hide their movements. Could it be that DC had simply seen an unusual combination of a laser light show, a tornado, and an unusually shaped cloud, and then concluded that he had seen a vision such as this, and then spent 30 years obsessing over it? By this point, the story was garbering a following outside of Reddit and the PST sub. An article appeared in the Tampa Tribune concluding that the Box of Crazy was almost certainly the result of natural phenomenon occurring at the same time as the futuristic looking art installation, and lamenting the conspiracy theories that were growing on online forums. For many, the mystery was solved. A man saw some lasers and spent decades of his life fantasizing about aliens. But, as many were pointing out, the earliest papers in the BOC were from the 1930s, showing that DC was interested in these ideas before whatever happened on July 7th, 1977. It's likely he simply folded UFOs into his existing Seventh-day Adventist belief structure and his specific interest in the Book of Ezekiel possibly inspired by the ancient astronaut theory being propagated by such writers as Eric von Daniken at the time. And we don't know with any certainty that DC's talking about a vision that he saw. The phrasing is sort of open-ended. He could be relaying somebody else's alleged sightings, or drawing what such a sighting would look like if it were to happen over the inverted pyramid pier. Clearly, from DC's work, we can see that he was a person of great technical and engineering skill, as well as someone who read scientific literature and admired scientists like Carl Sagan. Perhaps DC, who was artistically inclined, attended the pier knowing full well there was a laser artwork, and was inspired by what he'd seen in his own art and designs. Whatever the case may be, from that day forward, according to his writings, DC became convinced that Jesus was actually an extraterrestrial who'd used anti-gravity technology to ascend to heaven. Much of his writing documented theoretical designs to harness such technology. The creatures we see are actually machines designed to be ridden by human beings, like mechs or powered wingsuits. He even designed a method of GPS that used a liquid layer between a globe and an air bubble. Theoretically, it could be used to guide a craft across the world. His gyroscopic designs and his blueprint for a frictionless bearing were also part of this hypothetical machine, the Puma space train. Function unknown. When combined, we see that DC had planned at least two versions of this diorama. One was small, perhaps a model, and designed to be hung from a ceiling. The other, if fully constructed, would be 60 feet high and, seemingly, designed to hover over the inverted pyramid in Tampa Bay which DC draws often, possibly using anti-gravity technology which he mentions in his writings, and it would also include these spheres which he explains as being somehow made of lasers. The question of why someone would design such a thing may be again found in DC's beliefs as a Seventh-day Adventist. Some have suggested that it was his attempt to signal to Jesus or God or the aliens or whatever he believes in exactly that humanity was ready for their return. Tramstop Dan also joined the subreddit and provided some more info on the origins of the box. It had actually been found years earlier by another redditor named Dirty Gremlin back in 2008, next to a dumpster in North Carolina. Dirty Gremlin had known that the contents were special as soon as he'd looked inside, but had stored it away until years later, when his photographer friend Tramstop Dan was over at his house, and they decided to shoot the pages and upload them to Reddit. Tramstop Dan uploaded the second half of the BOC, and some Redditors began working on renders of some of DC's designs. A journalist dropped by who'd managed to track down some of DC's surviving relatives who were just as confused by the box of crazy as everyone else and a self-professed handwriting expert turned up to throw in their two cents. And Funkify spearheaded a valiant effort to get DC's largest diorama turned into a float for the Burning Man Festival, which was unsuccessful but not for lack of trying on his part. 
but after a logical explanation had been presented, interest in the Book of Crazy had started to dry up, and there wouldn't be another update for two years. At the end of May 2015, Funkifies was contacted by a redditor named That's My Box, who claimed that she was the previous owner of the BOC. After several calls and emails, That's My Box showed Funkifies evidence that she was telling the truth, and emailed him some pictures of previously unseen DC works. According to That's My Box, she had come into possession of it in the 90s after moving into a suspiciously cheap house with just one small catch. Daniel Christensen was the previous tenant, and the house was chock-a-block with a lifetime's worth of his stuff. Apparently, the BOC wasn't even one-tenth of what was in the house when she first moved in. There was just a single desk in the living room, and no furniture, and everywhere were piles of papers, books, charts, blueprints, etc. Finally, according to That's My Box, there was a large wooden machine in DC's bedroom. It had a seat and slots perfectly carved to fit DC's hands. According to her, it looked well used. From her description, it looked like DC's diorama. DC claimed he used the machine to travel through time and to communicate with aliens. The papers That's My Box still own describe in detail how to build the machine, how to time travel, and how to have out-of-body experiences, and even what specific diet to eat to prepare yourself. Her reaction to all of this was fear. She wasn't sure what any of it meant exactly, but she suspected it may be evil. One night, she saw two men in black suits staring in her window and fled the house in terror. Soon afterwards, she had two buddies come over to help her cart all of DC's stuff to the dump. But unbeknownst to her, they actually kept some of the stuff, and years later, she went to her friend's house and saw that one of DC's paintings was hanging on the wall. After she explained it was hers, her friend gave her back the BOC and she hung on to it for years, occasionally showing it to engineers, pastors, and physicists over AOL chat, but nobody could really make any sense of it. Somehow, after moving to North Carolina, the BOC was accidentally left behind when That's My Box moved out and was cleared out by the landlord, and this is where Dirty Gremlin found it in 2008 and hung on to it for five years before Tramstop Dan uploaded the album to Reddit. Funkifies assured everybody that he would post the manuscript soon, and there was an army of willing people prepared to build their very own Puma space train. The manuscript never emerged. It's unclear exactly what happened, but communication broke down between Funkifies and That's My Box, and Funkifies claimed that she was increasingly hard to get in touch with. Without new content, there was no further updates. Investigation gradually declined, and nowadays the sub is mostly inactive. Funkifies eventually released a video giving his take on Daniel Christensen. Unfortunately, I can't find a copy on the internet. But from what I've seen looking through his posts, he came to conclude that DC had a complex inner life, where he imagined himself astrally projecting himself and talking to aliens. Tram Stop, Dan, and Dirty Gremlin came to similar conclusions. That the BOC was nothing more than the result of loneliness. Another fine addition to the canon of weird outsider art. That's my box still believes that the BOC is dangerous, dark, and something not to be trifled with. As for my opinion, I'm really not sure what's going on here. I think that Rockney Krebs' laser show may be a piece in the puzzle, but I think it's lazy to believe that DC being confused by lasers could lead to all of this. But who knows? Stranger things have happened. There's more story out there, and who knows, maybe one day more papers will emerge. Ultimately, I'm sure that Daniel Christensen would be very happy to see that his ideas remain, despite the fact that so many of the details of his life are lost forever. But, for now, this one remains unsolved. Until next time.